All right, so have you ever felt the thrill of unboxing a new gadget only to realize it's not really what you expected? That's exactly what happened to me when I swapped my MacBook out for this sleek and powerful iPad Pro. Now, I don't know if you can relate, but I wanna talk about why this change hasn't been everything that I'd hoped for, despite the iPad's impressive features and why it just couldn't replace my MacBook Pro. And make sure you stick around to the end to find out if any of these drawbacks will be a make or break for you and your workflow. Okay, so there are quite a few things that set using a laptop apart from a tablet, like the form factor, software, accessories, user experience, and so on. I wanna talk about each of those separately because if I don't, I'll start rambling and get lost in my thoughts. And in all honesty, that's not helpful to anyone. When I first made the switch, I was excited about all the possibilities the iPad Pro could offer. I mean, it's marketed as the all-in-one device for creatives from Apple itself with the what's a computer ad. I was initially drawn by the fact that I can get back into, you know, doing art with my pencil and still be mobile. My MacBook Pro was showing its age at the time, and I have a gaming PC, as you can tell by the frame, so I wouldn't be without a proper computer, so I decided to take the plunge. I really wanted to see if I can capitalize on the workflow with a Windows PC and an iPad Pro for my on-the-go computing. It didn't take long for me to realize the impact it had on my productivity and everyday tasks that I kind of took for granted. Multitasking, file management, and dealing with certain limitations became daily challenges that slowed my workflow down. An iPad isn't necessarily made to do all the different things that laptops are made to do, and you really have to purchase a bunch of different accessories to make your iPad more laptop-like. For me, I have the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and I paired it with the Magic Keyboard, so this is really the closest you essentially can get to a laptop replacement in terms of screen size and usability. With that said, the screen size is comparable to what's offered on a MacBook, but it's not the same to me. Sure, it works perfectly fine when you're on a flat desk, but it struggles when you try to use it on your lap or anywhere without a flat surface because all the weight is put into the back, so you end up in situations like this. The iPad form factor is super versatile because you can choose to use it just like a laptop with some accessories, or you can use it like its intended use as a tablet. Note taking feels super natural with the ability to type things out pretty quickly, but if you also need to, uh, you know, quickly switch to a drawing diagram or sketching out ideas, you have the ability to do that too. The App Store has a ton of great drawing apps and paired with the Apple Pencil support, it, it, that's the best part about it. Having the ability to read a book or some article on the couch and then, you know, prop it back up on the keyboard and get to work, honestly, that's an experience like no other. Transitioning from a MacBook to an iPad required a significant overhaul in my workflow. Finding app substitutes to match the functionalities that I was so used to using on a daily basis with the MacBook, adapting to a touch-based interface meant relearning how to interact with my device. Tasks that were intuitive with a keyboard and trackpad became kind of nuanced to a sense and required different techniques to get the same end result. Multitasking, which was once so seamless on the Mac, was actually quite challenging for me on the iPad Pro. Split screen and app switching were slower and less intuitive. Accessing and organizing files wasn't straightforward. It prompted me to rethink my entire workflow basically on the iPad Pro. So to really like optimize my workflow, I kind of relied heavily on, you know, cloud-based work. I was relying on online storage, which became, you know, somewhat of a necessity at that point, which required me to change a lot. Now, don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying change is a bad thing, just something completely different if you're, you know, not used to it. Learning the different nuances of the iPad Pro's operating system and unique functionalities came with its own set of hurdles too. However, by navigating these challenges and experimenting with different approaches, I managed to carve out a modified workflow that, you know, somewhat kind of aligned with my needs, though it did require a few adjustments and compromises. One of the major hurdles I faced was limitation in like, you know, professional software for the iPad Pro. It fell short in running some of the crucial applications I personally rely on for my work. Software was generally something that was a huge difference between iPads and Macs. That's changed a lot in the recent years now with, you know, the iPad Pros and the laptops sharing the same chip. So, you know, a good bit of software is interchangeable. You could download some mobile apps on a Mac, some Mac apps on a mobile. You know, an iPad can plug into some 4K external webcams, terabytes of external storage, and other accessories. If you were to hand me just an iPad and the Magic Keyboard, I could do just about all the common things that I probably would do on a Mac. 
the experience and how you interact with certain applications is just different. For example, you can use Google Drive and have access to all your different files, documents, sheets, presentations. But if you're more of an advanced user and you know, you're know you used to doing things a certain way, it can take a little longer and can be a bit more difficult to accomplish. Or you know, in some cases, it just can't be done at all. Or if you're a professional creative and editing video footage, you know, your typical workflow is definitely going to be different. You can't edit directly off of external drives, so you have to have the footage internally on the iPad, which leads to issues with, you know, do I have enough storage to hold all the footage for this project and so on and so forth. I think for common everyday tasks, the iPad is great and it can do all the things a lot comp I think for common everyday tasks, the iPad is great and it can do all the things a laptop can do, but the more advanced stuff that more professional users may be looking for. The iPad's just not up to the task for me. Okay, so as someone deeply involved in content creation, the iPad Pro posed, you know, significant challenges for me. I absolutely loved working with the pencil on this thing. It's an experience all on its own. Working with Procreate or Freeform etching out ideas and illustrations is honestly the best experience with this iPad for me. Working in Lightroom on the iPad is much more immersive. Utilizing the pencil to adjust sliders and dial in colors, that's kind of where I really found this iPad to shine in my workflow between, you know, editing pictures and uh, drawing. Like, there's no experience like it. But when it came to video editing, graphic design, and a few other creative tasks, it became more cumbersome and less efficient compared to what I was accustomed to on my Mac. The user experience on the iPad Pro was undoubtedly different. So while the portability was great, the ergonomic setup and input methods, especially the keyboard and trackpad, didn't match my comfort and efficiency I had with my MacBook Pro. In everyday activities like general web browsing, watching YouTube videos, streaming content, and playing games, it's phenomenal. Responding to emails, jotting down quick ideas, you know, all those things are great. However, when you sit down to write something of length and want to do it somewhere other than a flat surface is kind of where the problem lies. I like to, you know, write out ideas on my bed, on a couch, and I, I know those aren't the best, but you know, sometimes I like to do that. Using it on my lap was not as nice as having a real laptop since all the weight is, you know, towards the back of it. I found myself having to do like a balancing act to get the positioning just right on the, on your lap. You know, when you're tired of using it like a laptop, you can rip off the magic keyboard attachments and now it's an iPad again. What I found makes the iPad feel the most like a computer is when it's plugged directly into a monitor. Now you can do this by either getting an HDMI cable connected to a USB-C dongle or directly to a monitor that supports USB-C. On the external monitor, you can have the four apps on the screen open at once. Any more than that and it slides it off into like side the side of the stage manager, which contains a lot of different active apps that are open in the background. So having four apps open on the iPad is completely different than having four windows open on the Mac. When you resize applications, the apps auto adjust the layout and size, which is, it's pretty cool. The external display feature of the iPad is great. I can have YouTube up, my script, Safari tabs open, so that I can have everything, you know, on one screen. Now here's the part that's not so great. A lot of times it's just not a fluid experience and you end up getting these weird glitches or hangups you know, happening all the time. When clicking on the status icon on the external monitor, it opens up on the iPad screen instead of the external monitor. Or if you wanna take a simple screenshot, you'll be taking screenshots of both what's going on on the iPad screen and what's going on on the, exter ex the external display. You wanna record video of something, well, it only allows you to record the iPad screen and not the external display. Sometimes if the iPad doesn't like the apps you have on screen or didn't like how you resized it, it just simply crashes and you lose everything you had open. Sometimes apps just decide not to display correctly, but overall the external display support works great when it does, but I found a majority of the time it's pretty buggy, which is kind of a big letdown. I mean, this has been a feature that's been available for a while now, but I just, I don't think it's there yet. So peripheral support was another area where the iPad Pro struggled. Integrating external monitors, specific types of storage, and other accessories was far from seamless, unlike the MacBook Pro's compatibility. 
When you go the iPad route, you're going to need a ton of accessories if you're trying to make more of a laptop experience. The first thing you need to consider, and basically a necessity if you know that's what you're after, is some sort of keyboard and mouse combination. If you want it to be mobile, you can get a keyboard and trackpad built in, or you could always just get an external mouse and keyboard, but that's kind of really defeating the purpose of trying to replace a laptop. When you buy a laptop, you get the complete package. You get everything you need for it it's just to be a laptop. So just something to think about. I've used the Magic Keyboard from Apple for quite some time now. I've tested out some third-party keyboard trackpad combos and they just didn't feel right. The keyboard comes with an extra USB-C port to use for charging, which is a nice feature giving the ability to free up the ones on the iPad for, you know, external accessories. Honestly, in my opinion, the Magic Keyboard makes the iPad feel most laptop-like versus, you know, the other keyboards that are out there. When it comes to cost and value, trying to use the iPad Pro as my main device just didn't seem to work for me no matter how much I tried. Dealing with all the workarounds to complete the same task just felt like more of a hassle and it's really worth in my opinion. The iPad Pro 12.9 starts at $1099 for the base model and of course you're going to want more storage than that since everything you have to do is internally. So that means you're looking at $1200 to $1400 for the iPad alone. Then you add the Magic Keyboard at $350, the Apple Pencil at another $100 and before you know it you're getting into MacBook territory. And from what I heard, the new iPad Pros, they're starting even higher than that. So again, that's just something to think about. It's always, I shouldn't say always, but for we've been asking for quite some time for, you know, Mac OS to be kind of intermingled with iPad OS, and it just doesn't seem like that's going to happen. The form factor and versatility of an iPad beats a traditional laptop in so many ways, but for me personally, I'm not sure if an iPad can fully replace a laptop just yet. It's funny, when I talk to some family members or friends that aren't as, you know, creative or super tech savvy, a majority of them say that an iPad would fit just about 95% of their needs just fine. They prefer the simplicity and, you know, similarities it shares with the iPhones. But what about you guys? What do you think? Have you replaced your laptop with an iPad? And if not, what's really, you know, holding you back from making that switch? Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.